the world of open source by its very nature, and I don't really see how this could change, is always going to suffer from the bus factor. This is the idea that if a key person in a project, whether that be the main maintainer, the main developer, the developer of a subsystem, or anything else like that, someone very important to the project, either dies or leaves the project or for whatever reason is not able to develop the code there's just not anyone in place to take over that role someone could fill it but they wouldn't be able to do it to the same extent as the person who was doing so before if you look at the contributor graph for pretty much any notable project out there you're going to see the person in first place with a lot of commits and then second place is a fraction of the amount of work. There are very few projects where a project actually gets handed off. WROOT is a great example. And even fewer projects where there are a lot of active contributors. Projects like GNOME and KDE are very much the exception. But even in those cases, they're broken down into individual components. And there are certain subsystems of GNOME and of KDE where, even though a lot of people use it, one person develops it. But again, that is the exception. Most projects are like Curl or Hyperland where there might be a lot of one-off contributors, maybe some returning contributors as well, but most of the work is done by a singular person. And if that person goes away, well, the project's basically dead. It might still be developed, but it will not be developed at the rate that it was before. And the Linux kernel is absolutely no different. There is no lack of kernel developers and active developers, but each subsystem in the Linux kernel is treated like its own miniature project. And people that work on one project, in many cases, don't work on other projects. So even if one subsystem has, let's say, a thousand developers, there might be something else which only has three, or in some cases, only one. And this is the problem, because sometimes those subsystems are very, very important subsystems, at least to the user, but there's not many people actually working on them. And today, I want to talk about two cases of basically the exact same thing happening. The reason was a little bit different, but it was two separate places that ran into the exact same problem of the maintainer just not being the maintainer anymore. Here is the first case. Remove Nerolf as driver maintainer. Remove myself as maintainer for GUD, MI0283QT, Panel, MIPI, DBI, and Repaper. My fatigue illness has finally closed the door on doing development of even moderate complexity, so it's sad to let this go. The only driver here you may have interacted with is GUD. This is the generic USB display driver, but even then, most people probably haven't used any of these. These are not the most important subsystems, Obviously, for people that use these drivers, this is annoying, this is a problem, and hopefully someone can come along to keep the drivers going. And this change is modifying the maintainer's file, so if you're ever curious who is maintaining a certain subsystem, who is maintaining a certain driver, there is a list over on the kernel website, also it's in the git repo if you want to do it like that, but if you want to go and search for anything in here, you can very easily go and do so. The list is obviously very long, there is a lot of things in the kernel, and a lot of people working on things in the kernel. Um, I can just keep dragging this out and we're still not going to get to the end of the list because it's actually just that long. And whilst there weren't many responses to the email, the ones that were here are basically saying, hey, we're sad to see this happen. We're sad to see you go. You've done great work over the years and we appreciate everything you've done. And there is this follow-up response from the maintainer. It has been very rewarding to be part of the DRM community. That is direct rendering manager, not digital rights management. There are so many kind people here, making it a nice place to be. Even though this has been a hobby for me, I have always felt included in the community. Thanks for getting me up to speed on how to do development in the kernel, and all the time you spent reviewing my patches. For that, I am grateful. When the sadness leaves me, I will have some good memories to look 
back on. Now let's go over to our second case, this one from Call Valo. Cal Valo? I'm gonna go with Call Valo. If you happen to see this, just correct me if I'm wrong. This is a much more important maintainership role. I'm stepping down from my maintainer roles. My first commit, this one here, to fix the kernel was back in 2008 for 2.6. 24. 2.6 went on for a very, 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 very long time. So long, in fact, that for LTS, they actually added an additional number on the end at the time. Yeah, it was a really stupid time for the kernel. So I have been here for a long time. Thank you, everyone who I have worked with. There are too many to list here. Jeff continues to maintain ATH 10K, ATH 11K, and ATH 12k drivers so they are unaffected but for the wireless driver maintainer there is no replacement at the moment if anyone is interested please do let Johannes and me know to better understand what is happening here here is the list of maintainers so these Qualcomm drivers these are totally fine because there is a different maintainer also listed as a maintainer Jeff Johnson the one that does have more of a problem though is this right here Networking Drivers Wireless, where they were the only maintainer. And of course, people again are saddened by this announcement. If you want to read those replies, feel free to go ahead and do so. But here's the thing. Even though Wireless is a very important part of the kernel on the user side, it's relatively niche for the kernel development side. And, uh, yeah. That's, you know, a bit of a problem. So here is Johannesburg. The personals mentioned you should contact if you're interested in taking up the role and involved in maintaining some of their own drivers as well. I'll be honest and say that I did delay my reply to see if anyone would speak up. But in the short term, I really didn't expect anyone to step up. We are pretty niche in wireless after all. There's obviously reluctance of NetDev picking up any wireless related activity. And that would anyway be impractical if CFG8211 and or Mac 8211 were to remain separate. There's also a clear separation of the list, and given the volumes involved, I think that's likely better for everyone. In the short term at least, I therefore expect that I will need to be the custodian of the wireless trees, and I say custodian rather than maintainer quite intentionally, because I cannot really take on the role as you filled in the past, shoes a few sizes too big, I guess. So as the wireless community, I think we'll need to come to terms with the fact that our workflow and processes will change now and we'll invariably have to take on some new work. In some ways, NetDev has already undergone such a transformation in the past. As for reviews, I suppose that'll be a new thing in the wireless world where pretty much everyone, with few exceptions, works in their driver niche. I would think that also the case for Ethernet in the past though, where we now see cross-vendor review by tags on many patches even one specific to other drivers. This is where we should get to, to distribute reviews across more people. For those of you who may not have seen, Jacob also publishes statistics about that if you'd like to go check that out right over here. Hopefully then, over time, we'll see where things fall and find one or multiple people to share the tree maintenance with again, bus factor and all that. However, that's only my vision for how we continue to maintain the wireless tree going from here. I'm open to other suggestions, though preemptively reject the suggestion that every driver has their own maintainer, and that's good enough. Whilst I often talk about open source and funding, and that's certainly going to help in a way with the bus factor, because if more people have the ability to work on open source and actually pay their bills, more people are going to be around. But the funding part is the easy part to solve. All you need to do is separate people from their money. And the way you do that is quite simple. You provide something of value and you ask for money. The problem is a lot of projects fail on the second part. The hard part is getting people interested in a project. Even if there is money there, there is money in a lot of places. And if you just don't have the interest in working on a project, like a niche part of the Linux kernel, 
finding someone who's going to do so, especially when an open source, generally you don't get paid as much as working for a big tech company like a Google or an Amazon, something like that. So you need to find people who are actually passionate about something because otherwise they could just take their skills elsewhere and either work outside of open source or work on a project they actually care about. And that's something I have no idea how to solve. I don't think anybody knows how to solve it, and if somebody does, I'd really like to hear it. Let me know in the comment section down below. So, if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribes, and Libera Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Write something.